What up, family? Uh, uh, it's a late night tap here real quick. I said they telling people don't lie. If they go tell somebody, go tell it somebody, you tell somebody, man. Instagram is dead, bro. I gotta. I can't wait to get off of this. Cool. What up, family? Having a community is the only way. <clears throat> what up, family? I can't send out a text because it's too late. So I gotta go with. There's like 26 people in here. It's late, man. I can't be texting people like that. That's money, girlfriend. It's one o'clock. It's one o'clock. I think this is out. I think this is out, D. Right, I'm up my text. I'm, yo, it's late, but I'm up. I'm gonna do it. Somebody said, I, 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 this girl said I checked her more than her boyfriend. <laughs> okay, they, 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 they sliding in. Uh, Approval up. Yeah, what are going to be? See? It's Saturday. You go ahead and get me in trouble, man. I'm gonna go ahead and send this. I guess they still doing this. That's 15,000 people I just texted. Somebody go be mad. This man. Texting me, yup. Who is this texting my girlfriend? They say 19 keys. They got my picture showing up and everything. Somebody might have messed up somebody's relationship, man. That's on you, Blue. That's on, their relationship is on you. You convinced me to do that. I hope it's stronger than, than my tech. I surely do. What going on, family? Listen, y'all up, y'all up. I heard y'all was up. Yeah, y'all, I know y'all want to know about the Dodge King. What did I say today? I said that based on behavior science, if this doesn't go right with Elon, of course, it's going to stop a lot of people from getting into Dodge because they lost so much money. Reinforcing a negative behavior, right? A negative rule, uh, a punishment. It's only two different type of um, rules when it comes to everything we react to. It's reward and punishment. I say, yeah, that text message helps. Yeah, ain't nobody else who's going to come in if I have a community. They say, you know, we can't sleep when Key send that text. Okay. I hope they're stronger than my text. Yeah, listen. I don't know how. I don't know because I don't know if I'm I'm rolling over and my girl got 19 keys texting her. Oh, I know he's talking about someone. You on IG Live. Like, that's like kind of sliding in a DM or like telling her, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know about that. But, uh, you know. Okay, people texting. Cool, cool. Lodge, you're funny. I'll be there. I love y'all though, man. It's been years of y'all tapping in, and y'all been rocking with me the right way. Okay, now we now we talking. Four hundred people in here. I can begin. Um, first of all, blessings to everybody that's here. Uh, powerful conversation. You understand me? That we just had tonight. We had an amazing class. Uh, if you like the class, buy a badge. You know what I'm talking about? Let keys get paid one time. Now listen. I dropped some science that was different than science that I've heard on this cryptocurrency market. And I think that this is going to equip you with some real, it, it can be dangerous though, right? Some of this stuff that I'm teaching right now can be dangerous in the wrong hands. You understand me? In the wrong hands, a person can really control it. You know what I mean? Like really have power over the world. Um, so... I want people to be careful when you go listen to my podcast. I want you to use it for yourself. Don't try to use it to, you know, conquer others because it's kind of dangerous. This is why when I teach it in, when I teach this class in, 
Um, thank you, uh, uh, Cosmic. When I teach this class in the BWO private section, you know, I want to make sure that uh, everybody understands the ethics that go along with the information I'm going to teach them. I have some information that can truly, you know, change the world and change your power that you have in the world. But I just don't want you to utilize it the wrong way. Like I can teach you how to create cults and religions and global brands, but everybody don't deserve it. Some game is really dangerous. You understand me? Uh, you can listen to my podcast anywhere podcast is played. Is just type in 19 keys and it'll come up. It's 44 minutes. 44 minutes. You understand me? We work. I was in, in, in the four folk God. Blue pillar 44 is on there. And it's powerful. You understand me? Now, listen, I don't walk around and I don't do one on one consultations and things of that nature because, you know, I need to speak to the world. I can't just speak to one person. Yeah, the game is, 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 is to definitely be understood, but this is like 1% knowledge. And I can go so deep into breaking some things down, it's just I don't be knowing who I'm talking to. And I need you to be ethical when you get the information so you can use it responsibly. So it's like, um, yeah, you can find a podcast anywhere podcasts are played, Spotify, iTunes, Google, uh, Anchor, like wherever they play spot podcasts that you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, just type in 19 keys and you need to listen to the one that I dropped. There's going to be one in the vault. The vault one is going to have the podcast plus the conversation that I had about the podcast with the students, which I went super high level with at one time. And it was really dangerous. Um, I'm only warning y'all because, you know, I never, I haven't done nothing by accident. I haven't done nothing by accident at all. You understand me? Like being able to create an international entity such as 19 Keys it's not about something that you just wake up and you start marketing, you start selling ideas. No, you have to be intentional and you creating thought forms into a world, utilizing real deep occult esoteric science that was here before I've been here, creating dominant frequencies, you understand me, so that they can have power in the world and exist on his own and take a life of his own. There's people who know of 19 Keys and don't know who I am. Think about that for a second. I meet people all the time. Oh, I'm 19 Keys. And they say, oh, I heard of that frequency. You heard of that entity, huh? You didn't know that I represent that. So teaching you how to do that, it's a tough guy. But once you learn... It can be utilized to manipulate people in the wrong way, to create your own world, your own court sciences, your own rituals, your own brandings, your own power. And I think that the way I'm going to teach, though, is how people can control their own behavior so that they can modify the way that they move. And that goes into studying self, but not just studying self from an early um, or, or an, an internal look inside, right? Because you have to understand that behavior science deals with our reaction, organisms' reaction to external cues. Like your DNA responds to things in your environment, which controls your behavior. And these are not things that you can help. We think we're free because we <clears throat> we we've been taught an idea of what freedom is. You're not castigated. Inside of change. You're not in a cell. That has nothing to do with freedom. Freedom is when you have complete control over your will, your mind, your behavior. That there is no outside influences that controls you at all. And it can be proven because even a person that thinks they're the freest in the world has a habit that they can't break. person think they're the freest in the world you get them around the, the right person all of their inhibitions go out the window controlled by sexual desire right 
We all been there, right? Controlled by food, controlled by entertainment, social influence, peers, controlled by content, controlled by lack of resources, controlled by rules, laws, order. So we feel like we're free. And perhaps the feeling of freedom is more valuable to most people than actual real freedom. Because the feeling is what controls our behavior. So if you can't control your state of being and your emotions, then you can't control yourself. Which means you can't control your cells. Your cells react to outside stimuli environment. To some point, we have what's considered to be free will. And, you know, free will makes us believe that we can make decisions on our own. And and, and, and and to some point we can. But then that goes deeper into our programming. You can only make decisions based on your programming. Because ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance lessens your ability to control. But so can knowledge. Because what you know can be used against you. In the court of law. <laughs> so once you know something, you make decisions based on what you know. Or what you think you know. And if a person knows what you know, then they can come through and control you based on what you know. Oh, I know your program and I know that you believe in God a certain way. I know you believe in this. I know that you believe in metaphysics or spirituality. So I'm going to manipulate you based on the things you know because now I can control you because you've owned those things. You decided that those things are who you are. And you've decided to filter everything that you are based on what you know. And that's who you believe you are. So now you can be controlled by your beliefs. Belief constitutes reality. It gets deep when you talk about why we buy things, why human behavior moves a certain way. Why did Dodge jump down? Why did human behavior decide to take energy out of something? Perhaps they didn't like the feeling that they got from the Saturday Night Live. Perhaps they didn't like to see the graph go down. It put a pit in their stomach, a feeling, I got to pull, I got to pull. I don't like this. So we can only do two things. If it goes up, we reward it. And it forces us into more of the behavior that rewarded us. So I'm going to buy more. It goes down, we feel punished. So I'm going to repel that behavior. I'm not going to do this. Many people are out. The 2011 crypto market crash made many people jump out they didn't jump in back for years until it felt like it was going to be rewarding it had to go from three thousand four five six sixty thousand dollars for some people they just jump back in why do we do anything what was the last reason that you bought something what was the last reason you had sex with somebody what controlled you Sometimes it's a feeling of insecurity, uh, loneliness, lack of affection, right? Wanting some intimacy. And we think that we have control over our decisions until we make the decision and then don't like the decision we made. Afterwards, you feel empty. Why did you do it? Afterwards, you feel like you played yourself. You did something that was against your morals. You did something that was against who you were. If you really controlled yourself, you wouldn't have did that. Your behavior was dictated by your environment. So we have to learn discipline and control. That's, this is why I break down slave ship, right? The slave ship is... A relationship with our behaviors based on our environment. Our environment controls us when we have a lack of resources. We have a lack of options. 
we have a lack of control because we can't dictate anything in our environment. So you feel like what? A slave, one who is whose will is controlled, whose behavior is controlled. The bills control what I do, what I can't do, how I feel, what I think. I have to go to work. I have to pay bills. I can't go to certain places. Confidence is not risen high when you don't feel like you have control. So now your emotions control you. The bills control you. Debt controls you. Insecurity controls you. All of these things. And because they don't teach the empowered mind to take a step back in to study self and to figure out, wait a minute. Did you know that if you change your environment, it will change the way you react to everything? That. Just by changing your environment, which is the people as well, the content is your environment because we think that content is an environment that it's in our phone. The phone becomes an environment because anything that you pay attention to, anything that has influence over you is environment. Many people never leave the hood and that's why they never grow because they only have certain things. In their environment that control them, that reinforces habits, reinforces certain thoughts, which reinforces certain reactions, reinforcing control. We hear uh, Shibu coin, we hear Safe Moon, we hear Doge coin. We are all these coins. Why do we buy it? Oh, the fear of missing out. The fear. It starts off with the fear, right? When you buy something based on fear, you don't have any control. The fear controls you. You can't, even if you didn't want to, you have to figure out a way to buy. Now, imagine if you live life to where you never made decisions based on fear. People fear loneliness and they're sleeping with somebody right now tonight. Only because they don't want to be lonely. Oh. Who would have been a child out of that? Yeah, a f yeah. Not out of love, but out of Not fear. Not out of fear. Out of fear. These are fear children that they have. In, and they resent the person that they had the child with. You understand me? Because you didn't control. It's like. Right now, uh, there's somebody that, for the ladies, it's a fella that, even if you wanted to. You, you know, a, a bruh come in your life, fly, you understand me, uh, tall, dark, and handsome. And because of the the way that your mind, body, and programming is set up, you're going to fall for that person easily. You can't even help it. Like, we program to where we don't have any power over how we react and how we behave. We think we do, but we don't. Because you start to think about what are all of the rewards, right, for what I'm observing. So it's going to enforce behavior to where you move towards that, even if it's not good for you. Some people go say they disagree. Some people go say that they don't know if it's true. But if we've been honest with ourselves... And there's no statement for every single person in the world, right? So I want you to think about the science of when this happens and how it happens and why it happens. But don't personalize the conversation. Look at it from a scientific basis. Brothers the same way. You see a sister, she thick as hell. You know what I'm talking about? Voluptuous scrumptious. Sickening, thickening. You know what I'm saying? You can't help it. You own those. You attract it because you couldn't control that. That's just how you programmed right now. You think about the ultimate feeling that you're going to get from it.
We never stop to try to control and observe ourselves. But how do we? Environment is stronger than nature. So we literally have to change our environments in order for us to change the controls that the environment has. A child is controlled. So there are certain controls in an educational environment. We incentivize through tokens. We incentivize through, for adults, they get money to behave a certain way, working, right, paying bills. We're always creating rules for control and for behavior modification. It, a pimp controls the environment of the hoe by making her completely dependent on the pimp. The more he teaches her, the more she depends on him. The less she depends on self to ever do for self. The teacher makes the child dependent. The more you teaches the child, the less of their ability to learn on their own. So you still want to reinforce good behaviors. So you set a child up to act in manners that when they start to understand why they that education itself should be enough for them to learn and to move forward. But instead, you have to force a child, reward a child. But society is more based upon punishment than reward. But if you reward the child a certain way, human beings are driven by the feeling of accomplishment and achievement. So they're going to want to continue to chase that feeling of accomplishment and achievement. And the reason I'm getting down to this subject is because cryptocurrency is based on the model of behavior modification. Rewarding behavior, tokenizing, rewarding behavior. And it gets deep when you study because you can see how society is being controlled based on the design techniques and controls that's put into these cryptocurrency models. But that goes into marketing, branding, business, capitalism, all of it. Then we think we control ourselves. We say, I'm a master of myself. No, you're not. And it's not until you realize it that you can really have more power. And perhaps you can never have 100% complete because there's just too many factors that control you. But the greatest study is the emotional control. You study emotions and study environments. We even learn different in certain environments. It was a brother. He said he studied himself so much that he realized that he could only play like, I think he was trying to play the cello or something. But it was only when he tried to play Beethoven. And he could only play certain strings in certain environments. Otherwise, he couldn't get it. But he was studying himself so much that he was trying to figure out small environmental tweaks that made him behave, think, and do and move differently. Why isn't the study of self-mastery taught? Why? Because it destroys everything in the world. It destroys all systems if you're no longer controlled by all systems. Dependency. Cryptocurrency works because it sold an idea and a feeling of independence. I need to be independent. I don't want all of these controls, these market manipulators, these people that I'm paying to do what I should be able to do. Why would I pay somebody to send money for me if I can send the money my damn self and I have to pay nobody? It only makes sense, but when you're only going to the technology because of the reward, you don't realize that the technology is the reward to do for self. That's what it is. It's a technology that allows you to do for self. <laughs> but you don't sell independence to people because most people don't truly want to be independent. That's why it's the hardest thing in the world to sell 
to our people and our culture because we want a boss. We want a savior. We want a leader. We want a pimp. We want a master. If we have post-traumatic slave syndrome, what is that? It's our need for a master in our blood. When you're sick, you still, master, I'm sick. I need to go to your hospital. Master, jab me. I heard that y'all might have created this, but I need you to fix it for me. So I can interact with your world. So why do they put out fears, media, tactics, all of these to try to control incentivize behavior? I'm going to make somebody feel fearful. The punishment is you might get sick. So you need to take this needle, put it in your arm. Oh, don't you fear poverty? Buy into this FOMO real quick. Well, they say, well, Keys, doesn't that go against you creating an institution to teach people to be independent? No, we want you to be independent. We're here to create masters of themselves. We want you to be masters of yourself, to give you all of the tools, but to give you a community that you can work together and have a system of interdependence. You all depend on each other. But at the same time, you sovereign in your abilities to do for self. Some of you are awaiting on different reward factors to jump into and to learn and different things. So you have to be incentivized in different ways. Right, I'm gonna teach my infinite sales strategy class and I'm gonna give away all of the game I got. It's your it's for the people, it's not mine. Because if I die with it in me, then it's not worth anything. But if I give it to the people, it's worth everything. Nothing is worth anything until it's sold. Somebody say, ever the salesman. Yes, I'm always selling. We are always selling. We're selling ideas, feelings, emotions, personality, character, energy, spirit. We don't even realize we're always selling. But some, it, the, 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 the masters of the world have gotten you to think that selling is wrong. We hear it. We hear cheap salesmen, but Look, salesmen yeah. still are the highest paid. They still run the world. But even them, they're selling the people an idea of that. They're still selling you an idea. How did they get you to buy into that idea? You have to think that if you don't like where you currently are, then you need to unsell yourself on everything that you currently do and think. Unsell yourself. These are paradigms of control. Mechanisms to control you to keep you the way that you are. So the sayings that you have, you have to think about how much of you that you've built that you don't need because it destroys your next level. You got to sell. You got to get rid of all your influences. Every time you get a thought on something, say, wait a minute. I only believe that because I was taught that I never came up with that. Anytime you hear sayings or quotes in your head, question them, challenge them. Don't just use that as your thought. That's an absence of thinking when you only have someone else's thought. You have quotes in there. You have phrases in there. That means that you never actually thought about that for yourself. It's a filler like a cuss word. It's a lack of education. Damn. We don't even think for self. We don't even realize that we got the ability to do it, but we look for everybody else to do it for us. What should I think about this? How should I do this? The more we know, the less we grow these days because we are overly informed without action because. Now, here's the key to this. Is book learning versus practical behavior. All right. Book learning versus practical behavior. Knowledge by experience. 
is when changes take place in an organism when exposed and induced to behaviors. So the fact that I went through it changes me who I am. It's different than knowledge by description, learning facts and information. That's why when we're children, we want to do what? We want to do it ourselves. No, give me that. I want to do it myself. That's what the child says, ain't they? We overly informed and underexperienced. This generation hasn't experienced enough, except when we went through a pandemic. We went through an experience together. It's probably the greatest thing that could have happened to this generation. An experience. And what we're going to go into is an economy based on experience. Because what we have already is all of the information by description. All of the the, uh, uh, the knowledge by description and, and none by experience. So it's going to get to a point where they're going to create all of the technology to create the idea of experience. All you are is your thoughts, whether you live it out or think it out. It's the same exact thing. We just go into a virtual world, an augmented world. I don't have to have a painting, but if I own an NFT, I feel like I have the experience of owning a painting in physical life. What's the difference? I get the experience. So when you study human beings, then you understand the stages and degrees on which you can modify behavior for more control. Because that's what those in the 1% are doing. They're not just waking up and saying, well, I'll try this business model. Maybe I'll try this one tomorrow. No, they're saying, how can we assure control and power for the next 100 years? They want insurance that they want to have power and control. They don't want to leave it up to chance. Nothing. One of the greatest Control methods is through fear. Through fear. So if I can get you to fear, I can control exactly what you do. Exactly. You will give up all logic to feel safe. What happened during Bush 9-11? They got weapons of mass destruction. Okay, we're going to blow them people up. They blew the people up. Oh, you know what? You you guys got to give us all of your rights because, you know, it might be another attack. Oh, OK. We in danger. I might as well do that. Of course. Why not? I will suspend all my logic. Give up all my rights. You can come in my house whenever you want to. You don't have to tell me nothing because it's for my safety. Homeland Security. Patriot Acts. Americans are so fearful. That they gave up all of their rights. It was a global act of fear. One that had not been witnessed before by that many people on a global scale at once. Ever in the history of this planet. And we don't realize that when these things happen, they create the most massive changes of society. When impregnated images are inside and embedded into the minds of people. Now you know exactly what you're dealing with because you know the internal organisms that people went through, the experience, and you can control people based on those experiences. Why is there so many people fear spending money on education? Because they feel like it's a punishment. They feel like it's a punishment for being poor, for not making the right decisions. They feel like it should be free. Because you should not have to pay to get out your current circumstances. Your relationship with poverty, that's like you paying somebody to get out of a bad relationship. You know, like, I don't want to do that. I just want to leave it. Then you have people that say, wait a minute. If this is a bad relationship, shoot, every second I'm in it, I'm paying for it. I'll pay whatever it is to get me in a better relationship in life. 
Help me go to ownership. I'm done with this slave ship. It's different type of people because they think about the reward. They're not controlled by the punishment. Some of us are emotionally attached to our situations right now that we need to let go. But we don't have enough control of our emotions to have to, to sever the ties. We don't know how to sever the ties. We still we control by it too much. We in love with the worst parts of ourselves and don't know why. Because we know them more than the best parts of ourselves. And what's familiar to us brings us comfort. So we comforted by our bad habits, our bad thoughts, the personalities that we are. And that's because we don't know how to control us. We don't know how to find worth within. So we look for it outside, which is what? The environment. Tell me I'm beautiful. Tell me I, I, I'm smart. Tell me I'm going to make it. Give me some, some validation. We have an entire world based on verification. I'll verify you. Verification and validation. Verification and validation. That's what the blockchain is. It's a system of verification based on human design. So, Kevin Sanders is a... He's a... He's, 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 he's a verifier and a validator. A verifier and a validator. Come in here for the check. That's right. Playing on the insecurities, people can't help it because he it's not him, he's representing something. Right. He carries the, the blue like how you go to Instagram and get your blue check. Right. Everybody wants the blue check. Everybody hey, tell me I'm oh. tell me I, I I'm somebody that's a ten. Tell me I'm twelve. Oh. So we allow somebody who doesn't even represent the type of person that you want to be with, right? Look. No, he got on four eyes, so he technically got problems seeing. Right. But they're coming to him for vision, for, ver for vision, and verification, and validation. This is a whole book. Come on. Okay. Yeah, and so with the blockchain is a system of verification, a worldwide system of verification, cryptocurrency, and guess what? You get rewarded for ver for the verification through tokens. It's the most basic elementary ways to control a human being. It's how you control a child. Let me reward you. I'm going to give you an A on your paper. I'm going to give you a star. A little sticker. I'm going to give you a trophy. These are systems of reward. Right. So once we learn to find self-validation. But also there's nothing wrong with, you know, that's that's why it's, it's dangerous to always to, to, to for self-praise. Right. Because you can be controlled through it. You, yeah. That's why we say all praise is due to a lie. Because then you're waiting on someone else to praise you as well. Your appraisals create your worth. And that's how you create your value. That's how you see yourself. If nobody is praising me, then I don't have any value. And we get addicted to praise. Hey, you smart. You can speak good. You can do this. I like the way you write. I like the way you talk. I like the way you think. I like the way you look. you the best at this. You're the best at that. We can't help it. But if you use it in the right manner, then you realize that by the environment creating these titles around you, it forces everybody else to behave towards you a certain manner. So even if we don't want it, we realize how useful it is so that we can be filtered by the verification process, the validation process, the praise process, which creates the value metric. Oh, I should measure this person's worth like that because if Keys is the greatest thought leader in the world, then I should listen to what he has to say. But if you never had a title to filter the conversation and the mindset, then you may have never known that I should listen to this with the highest, utmost important. So it modifies your behavior towards the knowledge. 
and forces you to listen deeper so that you can actually execute off the information. I didn't when when I said I was the greatest thought leader in the world because it was first brought up to me that this was a possibility. But I also understood that I remember when Wayne said he was the greatest rapper in the world. Yeah, yeah started all that. What the difference, of course, is yeah. I'm not in competition with nobody. I said a metric. Remember when Ti did it? I'm the king of the south. Yeah. That's a metric. Right. Not only do you garner attention, but now you create an anticipation for yourself and your audience. Right. Where now you can be validated in their eyes and they say, oh, you are the yeah. greatest. Right? So I am. You create this space that you can arrive. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's you, a beautiful market. You have to give a, a, a destination for the directions that you give in. You have to create the layout and the blueprint for your own uh, legacy. Mm-hmm. You see, this type of thinking, you can go, listen, you can go get information on money. You can go get information on credit and real estate and all of that. It ain't a, it's not a another Instagram live on the planet that you go get. It the way that it's given here tonight. There's nobody who does this in the manner because why? It's not that I'm so special. It's that this is my pattern of thinking. And the best thing that I can do for others is change their pattern of thinking. So they can originate their own thoughts on how they interpret information. This is my behavior when I receive information the way I process it down for concept creation. The concepts I give is so that it fills the thoughts and it fills the blocks of thought so that you can modify your behavior towards a better way. I be streaming straight from God like it is what it is. You you introduce me to certain information it's going to excite my brain. That exciting process, I know how I work. I look for information that excites me. If it don't excite me, I'm not going to teach it. But if I find some information that excites me, I know what that's going to do to my behavior. It's going to force me to go in the world and change it. Because I know that I've just been laced with an arsenal. And then I condense it down. I study it. I learn it. I, I connect the dots. So that I'm going in there architecting a mindset. Allowing you to see the world in a different view. In a different lens than you've thought of before. And so... What I, what I want to say to you all is tonight, you know, um, and I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you enjoy the podcast when you're going to listen to it. I want you all to do me a favor. One thing I do want to do, I, I'm all about the experience, right? And, and this is how I operate. When somebody gives me access, they show me an experience that I haven't had. They give me exposure, right? You show me a million dollars, I haven't had that experience. I don't, I don't want just want information by description, So I want to experience it. So people are showing me experiences that I'm not taking a part of. So I'm jumping in. Well, let me go get that experience. I chase experience. So long story short, my brother EYL was giving me the game on how to create the experience of having one of the top 10 podcasts in the world. I don't even think I want the top 10 podcasts in the world, but I want the experience of it. Because in life, the point of the purpose of life is procreation. We make everything so hard. I don't know. I need to figure out my purpose. I need to figure out what am I here for? I just need to know. Some of us, you know, you have a vision at such an early age, right? Vision, beautiful. You think you destined for something. You, it's, it's unshakable. It's like you just know you're here for a reason, a purpose, like something, something high. When you got that vision, it will drive your entire life.
those who never let go of it. I'm talking about sometimes it could be a, it could be a feeling that you just never let, but it feels like this feeling was handed down from God himself. Life ups and downs sort of take it away sometimes. Then you come back into that feeling and realize that I've been on this path chasing this vision my whole life. And once it happens, it feels familiar because you've been feeling this feeling your whole life. Like this is who I've been working to become. Didn't even realize it. I looked at that video when I was nine years old speaking. And hearing me say some of the exact same things from when I was nine years old to an adult made me think back when I was a child on my side and I had a vision that I was destined for something great to change, the like literally change the world. And that started to sing big when I was uh, in my teenage years, like unrealistic. And so I had to figure out how can I create the mindset that can change the world but also not think about changing the world that's so big so what I started to do I had to define what the world is to me because I realized that I was thinking about changing the world as changing the planet and the planet don't need changing the planet is perfect it's the world that's imperfect because the world is our habits, our thoughts, our visions, our behaviors, our reality, what we construct in our mind. So I realized that, oh, if I change people's mind, I change their world, I become a world changer. So I've created the architecture and the framework of thinking so that I can fit it into my vision. Some of you all have to redefine the way you see your vision in order to execute and bring it into fruition. I remember I had my uh, interview with uh, Black Magic. And he was like, Keys, everybody say you so positive. And I'm like, yo, really? Like, I never thought of myself as positive, right? Like, I just thought it was just, you know, like, I don't know, just an upbeat like life. You just live, like you just be on the move. And I had to ponder, like, why do people think I'm positive? Like, why is that, like, reputational? And I realized, like, after observing people, like, of course, being positive, you don't observe everything negative. You become the things you observe. So I always look for the good and the positive in all things, and I reflected the positive. You would tell me something bad and I would look for the good. To this day, if anybody comes to me with an issue, my mind will navigate directly past the problem and say, okay, what could the solution be? So my outlook to the world was optimistic at all times. I never had a pessimistic point of view. You can tell me the world about the end. Well, I'm like, is it going to be today or tomorrow? Because if it's not today, I'm going to enjoy it deal with that shit tomorrow why would I worry about the world ending tomorrow when it ain't gonna happen today <laughs> Shoot. you about to spend your whole day your last day worried about the world ending you see how impractical that is to me success only exists in the current moment it only exists right now no other time ever you can only be successful by being present You can only be successful by being present. It exists in every present moment that you have. Because that's what it means to be alive. We have we speak language. Language controls behavior, right? Spatial distance, the way we talk, the way we describe things is the way we feel things are far. We feel money is far away. How could money be far away? I want you to think about that. If you think about a million dollars, your mind automatically creates space between you and the millions of dollars. When money is all around us, it's energy. I mean, it could be in your phone already. 
Money is all around us at all times. Literally. Whether it's in people's bank account, their pockets, physical, digital, it's always around us. So why do you always think about it as far? Because of the way we speak, the language we was given. We think the past is behind us and the future is in front of us. Because of the language that we speak. We think about the arrow of time. We think about doing things later instead of now. And then later seems far away too. No, I'm going to do that later. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Tomorrow? How, why, why is tomorrow far? How did distance be created because of the language and the context and how we utilize the language? So language controls the behavior. So the more language you learn, the more control over your behavior you have because you can be multidimensional. The poor man, I want you to think about this for a second. If you make a correlation between the way you speak and the amount of money that you have. And if you change the way you speak, you can change the amount of money you have. Because the way that you currently use language is creating the world that you're living and the behaviors that you're creating. So words create worlds. Facts. Okay. And thoughts and things. That's facts. Uh -huh. That's why when we write, we spell. We spell cast. We cast ourselves into a world. We spell in the world that we want to be. I write it down. Right? Right, R-I-T-E, right, is a ritual. So when you write R-I-T-E and you spell, it's a ritual of spelling with words that are world, world, you understand me, into existence. In the beginning, there was the what? The word. Somebody said, I can't respect no influencer or man who endorsed Dogecoin to his community I almost allowed your behavior to let me call you one of the female Dodge names. Almost. But what I realize is that most of the people who come are seeking validation because they haven't had anybody acknowledged their existence for such a long time that they are important. So I ain't gonna call you a female doge. I'm gonna let you be, B. You know what I'm talking about? I'm gonna let you be. So, to that point, you know, as you all are growing on your journey, man, and, and y'all sitting here on a Saturday listening to me talk in my nice robe and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Female Doge. Doge. Listen, man, I'm too, I'm too, too witty for you, man. You might want to relax playing with me, man. We listen, man. Growing up in St. Louis, we used to, yeah, we used to, we used to clown each other tough. I, I realized that listening to that camera interview, like that's how it was in St. Louis. You walk on the block, everybody trying to clown. You got to fight. You got to clown ten people at once, and these fools is good. You understand me? Like, so, you know, the, the, the conversation that's here tonight, man, is, is one that, uh, if you really sit with this information, it can change your life. Like, I love, like, money is dope, right? Because it's just energy. I don't think of it, like, in the terms everybody else think of it. Like, the way you allow yourself to hate things is crazy, right? Like, the way we think about white people is crazy. 
because it controls so much of us. It forces us to look at ourselves a certain way based on how we look at them a certain way. Like, it's too much control that comes from our past and not our present. You understand me? We got to be present because I never allow anybody, whether they hate me or not, to control me. Ain't going to happen. I used to slap people up for stuff like that, but now I'm chill. I mean, I still slap somebody up if the situation calls for that type of behavior. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'll modify my behavior. <laughs> Depending. But I'm a civilized man. You understand me? A natural man. So I'll be chilling. But what I'll be wanting our people to realize is like how great we are. Like if we react to our vision only. You understand me? If we react to our vision only and not everybody else's, we control our world. And that's just point blank. But we don't react to our own vision because we don't have any plans. You don't have a vision. So that's why we've been working. You had us brothers with separate platforms come together to form Voltron to create a community, right? To give access to our people so that they can build wealth and power and have, you understand me, uh, information and resources at their fingertips every single day. I know people are looking. I listen. I'm gonna just keep it a book. I'm the reason, and and this might be ego saying this, just because the sentence started off with I. Right, and and even I'm a person that sometimes want validation. I want verification. Right, it's, it's human. Right. This is the world that we grew up in. You're talking about like how you've been programmed from a child to an adult. You understand me giving reward and punishment systems your whole life. So it makes you want rewards. You understand me? <clears throat> but I only say that. Because, you know, the reactions that I'm seeing from my behavior, and how people modifying theirs is that if we show you an example, it's going to change the way you react and it's going to change what you want to do. So we've been encouraging people to unify and mastermind and come together. And that's what we're seeing more. Been encouraging people to build their brands in a better way, to build their leadership with more standards and modify their character and their behavior and what they put out there towards the people, right? Modifying the archetype of what it means to be a leader instead of like just entertainment as being uh, important in our culture. So this has been the most beautiful part and I got about 30 seconds and I want y'all to go listen to the podcast and subscribe and leave a review. I need y'all to do this within the 24 hours. So do this for me tonight. Screenshot it for me. This is all I ask for y'all, right? You get this free game tonight, but tap in. Um, and those who are in the BWO, I see y'all tomorrow. Most likely, we do a private conversation on things that we don't talk about in the public. Um, and some more master classes that's going to be coming. It's a lot that's going to be coming. Matter of fact, I only got 30 seconds. So I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight on a Saturday night. You could have been anywhere. You understand me? But you decided to be here. And like I always say, you don't have to do this alone. You understand me? We can do it together. And that's been the most beautiful thing is that you got people taking the journey together that's usually hard because once you do something by yourself, it takes a lot more energy than when you do it with a team. I love y'all. You can watch my podcast on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere that you regularly watch podcasts. It's called 19 Keys. The podcast is called 19 Keys. Listen to it tonight. It's only 44 minutes, the one I just dropped. But I have some of the greatest episodes that's ever been established anywhere if you go through that podcast it'll change your life and your family's existence i appreciate y'all love y'all man join the black world order tonight text bwo mother's, day, mother's happy mother's